All right. <clears throat> Welcome. This is the event coaches workshop for the event Simple Machines. Uh, my name is George Martin, and along with my wife, Artie, we are the uh, event supervisors for this event. Uh, we've been event supervisors since 1998, and uh, this iteration of Simple Machines we've been doing since 2014. Uh, if you coach this event in the over the last couple, two or three years, uh, I will tell you right now that nothing has changed, but we'll go through it anyway. As an event supervisor, I want you, I would recommend that first you go to the Science Olympiad elementary page, use the drop down menu under elementary and click on events. On the left side of the page, scan down on the events until you find Simple Machines. Click on that, and that will take you to this page, which is our event page. Uh, there is a, an icon right there under the description that gives you the event rules. These are the uh, official rules for the event. Uh, below that are three icons that I want to talk about. The first, number one, is the coach's handout. This is, uh, a, it says 2022, but it's the same handout from last year. Nothing has changed. Uh, this is where I lay out exactly how the event is going to work. Number two is a 12-page document that I put together, which has sample questions and uh, some suggestions for how to prepare your students. Uh, this is an excellent, uh, I feel it's an excellent uh, document because it tells, it shows you exactly what format the questions will be in and gives you an idea how they're going to be worded. Um, number three, um, this is the a PowerPoint of the, or it is the PDF of the PowerPoint slides from a workshop that I conducted in 2014. Uh, and as such, it's still quite useful. Below that, there are three icons for training videos. Um, the first two are just simply uh, this presentation the last two years. <laughs> uh, I suspect that this one will get put up in place of one of those. Uh, the last one there, 2014 workshop, uh, that is a video of me giving that presentation back in 2014 that the, uh, the document above there under study guides is the PowerPoint slides for. So that should get you a lot of uh, resources to start working with. Below that, there are frequently asked questions. There are some of the more common ones that are posted up there. If you have a question that isn't answered by one of those, use the link at the bottom of this section where it says, ask for your rule clarification question here. You click on that I will, and put in your question. I will receive an email and I will answer that question and it'll, uh, that will get back to you. Uh, also on that page, there is a link to the custom zip grade form that we'll be using for this event. So you can print those off and uh, have the students practice with them. Uh, COVID protocols. Uh, to be determined. <laughs> uh, I don't know yet if students will be required or encouraged to wear a mask. Uh, I will definitely never discourage wearing of a mask. And I will encourage the use of hand sanitizer. Additional precautions are, will probably be announced right up to the day of the event. Um, and we will endeavor to make this event safe for everyone. Okay, the format of this of this event is pretty simple. It's uh, it is a station event. There will be ten stations uh, for the county 
competition there, I will set up two complete sets of the stations because I need to be, be able to handle up to 20 teams at a time. Uh, students will be allotted two minutes per station. Each station will have 10 questions. That makes a total of 100 questions, which are worth 150 points. The setup, most of these stations, most stations will have some type of object or tool provided on the table. There will be something on the table that the student can pick up and turn around and handle and, identi and identify which simple machine that tool or object represents. There will be one station dedicated to pulleys that will have a frame that will contain two or more pulley setups for them to evaluate. And then one station will be dedicated to inclined planes. There will be no actual object there, just lots of pictures. Uh, most inclined planes that I could bring in are way too big for the table. <laughs> test question, the, are the test questions themselves are going to be placed in document protectors and those will be taped down to the table at each station. Uh, that way they're always there, they don't walk, <laughs> no issue, and the student doesn't have a test booklet that they have to carry around. Uh, scratch paper and rulers will be provided by me at each station. Uh, scratch paper will be collected at the end of the session. Students should bring pencils, but not, pe not pens. Uh, and they may bring a clipboard for their answer sheet. Uh, many of the students like to put their answer sheet on a clipboard. It makes it easier to carry from station to station. And I'm okay with that long as there's nothing else on the clipboard. No cell phones or calculators will be required or permitted. All the questions will be multiple choice. Uh, some of them may simply be have only two options, yes, no, or true, false. Um, we will be, of course, using the zip grade answer sheet. These will be pre-printed with the team name and number. It's a 100 question blank. And, and of course the blank group zip grade sheets can be downloaded from the website, uh, from the event page. Now, the first five questions at each station are going to be identify the simple machine. These are all one point questions. The uh, object uh, may be a compound machine, meaning it may be a combination of more than one simple machine. Or I may give them two different sizes of the same machine for um, comparison pur purposes. Uh, a couple of the stations will, rather than an object, will have pictures and the they will identify the machine by matching a picture to the simple machine, simple matching type of thing. Um, note, uh, if I need to break a tie, I will use the first five questions at each station, starting with station number one and compare answers until I find a difference, and that's how I will break a tie. The second five questions at each station are concept questions. Uh, these are all worth two points. Examples are, they may, you may be at this, sorry, the student may be asked to estimate the mechanical advantage of a simple machine. These, uh, Mechanical advantages are always going to be ideal. Uh, in, in the world of this event, there is no friction. <laughs> we just don't deal with that. Um, a, some simple calculations may be necessary. However, I will 
always endeavor to use whole numbers or very simple fractions. Um, they may also be asked, the student may also be asked to identify the correct formula for calculating a mechanical advantage. Um, they, uh, another type of question would be to ask them to make a measurement of, say, like on a lever, I may ask them to, I, to measure the length of the effort arm. Basically, the distance from where the effort is applied to the fulcrum. I reserve the right to make these measurements either English or metric uh, because I'm going to select a measurement method that most uh, that is most likely to give me whole numbers. For example, if the measurement is say two and three quarter inches, I will instead opt for seven centimeters. So that I don't get into fractions or parts of a of a measurement. Uh, of course, I uh, all these measurements will be done uh, between labeled points on the object, and of course, I get to pick where I put the labels so that the measurement can be nice round numbers. So, um, other examples of questions in the, those second five, um, I may ask the student to identify changes or trade-offs to either the amount of force, the distance travel, speed, or the direction of the force. Uh, they may be asked to um, compare different sizes or configurations of a machine. And I may ask them to identify the class of the lever, you know, first, second, or third class lever. And finally, I may ask them to, to estimate or compare how much work is uh, performed by a machine. Work is defined as force times distance. So if two machines uh, if, if a machine uh, uses more force to travel the same distance, obviously more work is done. Or if the same amount of force is used over a longer distance, more work is performed. So that's the type of question they may run into. Okay, on the day of the event, uh, sequence event, I will greet all the students in the hallway. At that, there I will answer any, I will hand out the answer sheets and I will give some basic instructions before the students are allowed, admitted into the room. Uh, no observers are allowed. I cannot allow coaches or parents to come in and watch. Uh, I will give additional instructions to the students inside. Uh, outside, I'm giving them just enough to get them in in an orderly manner. Students will then move uh, once the uh, once the event starts. The students will move between stations. Again, two minutes per station, ten stations, so approximately twenty minutes. Uh, after which, the answer sheets will be collected. Students gather their personal items and they are dismissed. I have a total of thirty minutes to get them in the room give them their instructions, run them through the 10 stations, and get them out so I can reset for the next session. Okay, um, student preparation. These are the I recommend that you do this. You, you review the sample question document on the elementary website. Um, if you can, get a hold of your elementary school science textbook. Simple machines are typically addressed in chap in grade four, but that may vary depending on whose science textbook your school is using. Um, and work with your students, practice identifying simple machines. 
use common objects such as tools, kitchen implements, etc. cetera. Uh, you can supplement with pictures. Be sure and discuss the differences in the, the classes of levers. And then practice estimating mechanical advantage. Discuss the trade-offs, such as how a machine changes the force. You know, does this machine increase or decrease the force? Does it change the direction of the force? Does the effort move farther than the load or faster than the load? Uh, these are all things that they need to understand. Um, Library books, uh, I'm very partial to one called The Way Things Work by David McCauley. Uh, there's three different iterations of that book. Uh, any one will work for simple machines. Uh, that part of the book has not changed. <laughs> um, go on out and, and go to the internet for more um, resources. Uh, if you're do, using an internet search, and you search on simple machines, add science to your search term. Um, there was a rock band at one point called Simple Machines. Uh, I've also run across a software company that calls itself that called itself Simple Machines. So yeah, add the term science, that will help. You can also search on individual machines. For example, uh, just search on levers or pulleys. And uh, there's, I have found a number of links out there to uh, videos, games, worksheets, lesson plans. There's a lot of stuff out there if you go looking. Okay, practice tournament, district practice tournament. These are the four tournaments coming up. Uh, I will be at the first two. The second two, uh, we're working to have somebody else to uh, take care of my event there because I will be out of town. Uh, but it, there will be there will be a simple machines event at those two districts at Utica and South Dakota. Hey George, I'd like to provide yeah. an update to the Utica dates because we had a facility issue for the the facility we originally wanted for that event, okay. and so now the date is slightly changed. Uh, it's a day earlier, so it's now Monday, March twentieth, and Tuesday, March twenty first, uh, and it will. We were trying to move away from Mallow Junior High to make it more central to the right. Utica district, but we have been foiled. Uh, and we will be back at Mallow again this year um, and considering considering our options for the future. But um, so okay. the dates are 20th and 21st, and there will be more information coming out from the Utica director uh, to teams uh, on the, those dates as well. OK, so at this point, you don't know which day uh, this event will take place. It will. Simple machines will be scheduled on one of the two days, but we don't know which day right. yet. Uh, once we know exactly. who is running simple machines uh, and know their schedule, uh, we will we will uh, consider all the all the uh, constraints and pick one of the two days. And so all simple machine students will show up on one day or the other, but I don't know which yet. All right, very good. OK, and that basically finishes my canned presentation. If you have any questions that we haven't addressed here, uh, please go to the uh, Science Olympiad Elementary um, web page and submit a question there. And uh, we'll get an answer back to you just as quickly as we can. Thank you.